Greetings, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well today. I've got to watch where I'm walking in here. So as you can tell by the title of the video, I want to talk today about some essential things to know or think about before you come shopping for a camper. So things that might help you out, uh, not only make it even less stressful than it already should be, uh, but better equip you to make an RV camper purchase. So these are gonna be in no particular order. I'm just kind of gonna wing it. Um, I will timestamp everything so you can pick and choose what you want to learn about, uh, but let's jump right into it. Like I said, no particular order. Uh, but the first one that definitely comes to mind, and I'm sure it does you as well, is budget. What is your budget for buying a camper, RV, whatever you want to call it? Um, I can only speak to Walnut Ridge, where I'm at. When you come in, and you come in for the first time, we're going to give you, uh, or we're going to do an interview with you. We're going to ask a lot of questions to kind of narrow down. We have 66 acres of campers here, so we're going to kind of narrow down your focus. And one of the key things we're going to ask for is that budget, whether you're looking at total price or whether you're looking at monthly payments. So, for instance, we're in this 2024 Hideout 269 DB. You're looking at a sale price of 23995 and a monthly payment of $249. Like I said, I can only speak to Walnut Ridge. I can say, though, that when I'm at the RV shows, I do see price sheets uh, at all the other dealerships, and they do show you the sale price as well as that monthly payment. A little caveat, make sure you pay attention to any additional fees, hidden fees that are going to be tacked onto that. For instance, here... That price you see is the price you pay, period. Nothing more, nothing less, that's what you pay. Um, but that's something to pay attention to. So yeah, budget, have that in mind before you ever get to the dealership. The next one that comes to mind as an essential you should know before you arrive at a dealership, and this one maybe not as important as some of the other ones because a good sales consultant is gonna help you figure that out, but what type of camper are you looking at? So for instance, are you looking at a travel trailer like this Passport 268BH? Are you looking at a large toy hauler like this Valor 37V13 to haul all of your toys? Which I say toy hauler is also a fifth wheel. So are you looking for a fifth wheel, toy hauler, travel trailer? Or are you looking for something really small, such as this Luna, Luna, or maybe perhaps a hybrid, which would be a travel trailer toy hauler like this, and I forget what model this is, um, the Explore, Intech Explore, Flyer Explore. So it's kind of a nice idea to think about what kind of camper you and your family want. You know, just a second ago, I said no particular order, but I'm kind of finding that this one that I'm getting ready to share with you might be your number one most important one, and that is tow capacity. Most, I shouldn't even say most, a lot of customers that come in already have a tow vehicle and they're looking for a camper to pull behind that tow vehicle. We do have customers that come in and they purchase a camper and then they go get a tow vehicle that fits that. So I've seen it both ways there. When you're looking at tow capacity, it's very important because we're in this beautiful Flagstaff fifth wheel right now. It's 8,500 pounds, I believe. You're gonna be really upset if say your tow capacity is 7,000 pounds and you walk into something like this and you fall in love with it. Unless you're willing to trade in your tow vehicle or trade up your tow vehicle. So knowing your tow capacity is really important. I know when my wife and I first started, we bought our first camper. We weren't sure where to go to find that information. And I believe we had a GMC Sierra at the time. 
most manufacturer sites, if you go on there and you chat with them or they'll have a VIN look up and they will actually tell you the specific weight of or tow capacity of your vehicle. There's also tow capacity calculators on a lot of the different websites. We have one on ours where you can look up your, your actual year make model because, and it gets really confusing, not all trucks are equal. It depends if it's four wheel drive, if it's not four wheel drive, uh, lots and lots of factors in there for each and individual model. So knowing your tow capacity is very, very helpful because not only is it gonna help the sales consultant narrow down what you're gonna go look at, but it's also gonna keep you from falling in love with something that you cannot tow. Now on to another essential I, I think you need to think about, or at least consider before you start shopping for your camper, is what type of destinations are you planning with it and parking and storage. I think those all factor in and they're kind of all together. So let me give you a for instance. My wife and I go to a lot of the state parks and there are some state parks where it is almost impossible to get a big fifth wheel like that Cougar in there. Now maybe a smaller fifth wheel like this uh, Flagstaff Classic. What is this one? 281 RK, maybe. Um, most travel trailers fit in there perfectly fine. And I say that, that you can't fit in there. There are some of them that physically do not have the space to accommodate larger fifth wheels, uh, toy haulers, or even maybe some of your bigger travel trailers. Uh, another thing to consider is, are you looking at being permanent at a campground or maybe you own a lake property or you're buying a lake property? Because then you could look at, and I don't have any of them here in the showroom, but then maybe you're looking at a destination camper where you're actually taking it, parking it, and it has all of the size and the amenities of home, uh, but it's a camper. Maybe you're looking at something like that, or maybe you're campground hopping. And I would say the vast majority of your campgrounds, if not all of your campgrounds, can accommodate just about any size camper that you're looking at. So it's nice to think about what you plan to do with your camper before you come in and buy. And like I said, here we do an interview and that is actually one of the questions what do you plan on doing with your camper another one to consider is what amenities are you looking for um i think first and foremost the most obvious would be sleeping how many people do you need to sleep in your camper um and something to consider on that is not only your immediate family but you're going to find this could be a good thing and a bad thing you're going to find that you'll have friends and family that want to come camping with you, um, want to spend time with you. I know my wife and I actually take our camper on vacations uh, down to like Gulf Shores, Florida, Destin, places like that. And it's nice to have that extra space if like our adult son and his wife or a couple of our friends want to go and have a sleeping area for them. So you need to think about not only the immediate family, but also maybe possibly the extended family. Or you just say, hey, if I don't have room for them, they can't come stay with me. Um, and to piggyback off that, you know, think about do I need a bunk room, which is actually its own separate room in the camper, which like for my, like I said, adult son and his wife is perfect. It's giving them their own private space. They can put all their stuff in there. I can close the door. I don't have to look at the mess. You can think about that with teenagers as well. Or is something as simple and it's down in front of me, you can't see it, a pull-out couch, fine, because you pull out the couch, they sleep in it, that morning you get up, you put it up. But not only sleeping is important, but let's talk about cooking and prep space and serving space. You want camping to be relaxing and enjoyable. Sure, you don't want to be cooking the whole time, but I know that when we have friends and stuff together, there's nothing better than cooking a big, nice meal. You know, some steaks, some potatoes, you got corn, you got green beans. You got a mess of stuff cooking. And it's nice to have not only prep space, cooking space, but serving space as well. Maybe even a, a nice dinette or a booth dinette to where the family can sit and have a nice meal together and think about, you really got to put on the imagination here, but 
the windows, you look out, you're surrounded by beautiful scenery, you're sitting there, you're laughing, you're loving, you're having a great time. These are all things to think about. I'm sure if you're a first time camper or shopping for your first camper, you've heard the term glamping. I know everybody that is a camper is familiar with glamping because let's face it, these are beautiful. I'm standing inside, what is this? This is a uh, Brinkley Model Z 2900. Absolutely beautiful. And you have all of the creature comforts of home. You have comfortable furniture. You have a large TV. You have massive uh, stove, residential sized fridge freezer. You've got a place over there to pull out for dog bowls. You've got your breakfast nook. I mean, they have everything covered in here. You've got your heat, you've got your AC, you've got a beautiful bedroom and a bathroom that I swear looks nicer than my bathroom at home. Think about all of these things. What will you be doing with your camper? And I will tell you this, this one's going a little long, but I think it's important. I will tell you this, um, most of the time when me and my wife go camping, we're out hiking, we're canoeing, kayaking, uh, exploring the area that we're at, sitting on the beach. We're not in the camper a lot, but we did have one summer when we went to Gulf Shores and a tropical depression blew in and for three days we were stuck in the camper. Three days with my son and his now wife and then me and my wife. And it was nice to have the space. It was nice to have the big TV and a place where we could gather and hang out. We played a lot of board games. So think about all of these things before you ever go to the dealership because it's going to be even less stress when you're here. We've talked about weight. We've talked about size. We've talked about amenities, creature comforts, whatever you want to call it. Another thing, and I should have probably included in the last one, but I think it kind of deserves its own category, is layout. What kind of space are you looking for? For instance, this is a rear kitchen model. What is this? This is the Cougar 260 MLE. So it's a rear kitchen. And anytime you hear rear kitchen, you're going to be looking at a massive kitchen. Look at all of the storage above and below in this kitchen. Full-size residential fridge and storage for days. You've got a nice big TV to watch. You've got a fireplace. You have a cozy spot for two. So I would consider this a couple's coach. This would be great for like my wife and I. Um, bedroom layout. Here's your bathroom. And then you've got, which I love, king-size bed, large closet, plenty of space, Again, couples coach. So let's go in a couple more just so I can kind of show you what I mean. So this is a Cougar 29, 29BHL. I can't talk. And I was talking earlier about a bunk house or a bunk room. Check this out. So you've got a bunk up here, which will hold 800 pounds. This will fold down into a bunk, but it actually comes up as a table during the day. So maybe you're going full time in your camper. What a great place for homeschooling. Or you're full time and you work remote, you can actually come back here, close the door, and you've got a little office. I think this space is also really cool because they give you an access door from the outside so you can store bikes, kayak, whatever you needed to in here. But then we come out, so now we're in a, a family camper. We come out, we also have this booth dinette that's gonna turn into a bed. So now we're talking two, three people back there in the bunk room. We're talking one person here. You can sleep on these because I have. Um, and then you've got your bedroom back here. So this family style camper, Different layout, smaller kitchen because it's not a rear kitchen. This is more focused on the actual living space. And then let's go check out like at least one travel trailer. I've shown you two fifth wheels. All right, let's look at this Intech Rover. I love these front windshields on it. Wait till you see it from the inside. It's very cool. So this is the Willow. Check out that front windshield. How awesome is that? Great place to sit. And this will turn into a bed. But now you're smaller, couples coach. You are packed with amenities, 
but you're in a smaller package. You've got plenty of space back here in the bed, memory foam bed, TV back here in the bedroom. You've got your shower over here. You've got your toilet and sink over here. Let's go in at least one more travel trailer. Let's go in this Delta. I don't know which Delta this is, but let's go in this Delta. This is 262RB, okay? So it's a rear bath. So when you hear rear bath, you're usually talking about a really large bathroom. Here you see we have a very large bathroom. We've got our recliner theater seats. We have our booth dinette. We have plenty of cooking and prep space. That's not the main focus. We've got our TV for entertainment. And then back here, we have our bedroom, which you can partition off and have some privacy back here. TV back here in the bedroom if you want. So it's not as important, in my opinion, to think about layout as much as it is, uh, the layout sometimes can kind of be dictated by what we talked about earlier, which is your family size um, and what you plan to do with it. Like if you need a bunkhouse, then you're going to look at the bunkhouses if you're looking at couples coaches. But my caveat to that is, is that when you do shop for a couples coach or a family coach, if you've looked at some of the types of campers that I'm talking about, rear kitchen, bunk houses, um, travel trailers that just have the bunks out in them, it does help the sales consultant narrow down and show you exactly what you're looking for the day you come to look at it. Okay, I think I covered everything or most things. If you have questions, drop them down in the comments below. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is have fun. Make the buying experience enjoyable. Look at a ton of campers. Again, make sure you're in your tow rating um, or your weight restriction. Oh, another thing I want to do want to point out that I didn't mention in that tow one is that when you are looking at your tow capacity, remember you need to allow yourself at least a thousand pounds extra, and that's going to count your body weights, the stuff that you're taking, water in the tanks, and so on and so forth. So if you can tow 8,000, you don't want to buy an 8,000 pound camper. But have fun with it. Make it an enjoyable experience. Look at all of them that you want to look at. Try the beds out. Sit down. Have a conversation. And really enjoy yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I absolutely love doing these videos for you guys. I've got another one coming probably tomorrow with essential things you need to take with you when you're first time camping. Actually, things you need all the time, but some of the absolute bare bone essentials that you're going to want to take with you on your first camping trip. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic day and happy camping.